Our ancestors made sense of reality by telling each other stories of their gods. This is our attempt to bring those tales back to life. The Imprisonment of the Cyclopes We three, Argus, Brontes and Sterops, have been trapped in the dark since the beginning. And for what? Because we are not like them. Because we are different somehow. Because we are not beautiful. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and our father beheld monsters. Monsters we do not see in our own reflections. My brothers and I, we are just as strong as them, our perfect siblings. We came after them. I, Argus of the orb-eyed Cyclopes, shall tell you how this came to be and how we were not the only prisoners of Tartarus for long. When we first drew breath and caught sight of our world, we were in awe of our father. His blue skies stretched as far as my eye could see. Such a bright blue, it was everywhere. It complemented the greens of the earth around us, our mother. The ground was warm under our feet, and I felt the wind, a breeze that danced around us, about us. It stroked the hair from my face, but then it changed. The bright blue sky darkened, large clouds forming out of nowhere and gathering above our heads. The light of the sun was dampening, then the winds whipped about my body. They swirled around my brothers and myself. They grew stronger and more erratic until we could not move against them. We were encircled by them, trapped by the howling air. I felt a gust underneath us, and we were thrown into the skies. The earth disappeared as grey clouds enveloped us easily, sealing us in. I swore that the trees below stretched their branches to us as we were carried away. A haze of grey held us. Brontes pounded on the gaseous walls with his full strength, but his fists could do no damage. They simply hit the barrier like a wall. The strength was absorbed by the darkening mist. Sterops tried to dig through the clouds with little success. He grew more agitated as the floating walls began to darken and close in around us. It grew more claustrophobic as it turned and squeezed us together. Our nebulous cage shook as it moved towards an unknown location. The fast jolts causing us to clatter against the walls, trying to grasp onto anything to stay stable. We were flung against the strange walls and ceiling as the cloud took us wherever it pleased. My stomach churned. Bronte screamed in frustration and Sterops clung to himself. Finally, we came to a grinding halt and the clouds beneath our feet began to clear. Light burst from below and I took that moment to catch my breath. But our relief was misplaced. As the makeshift vapor floor thinned further, my brothers and I began to sink into it, and then it collapsed. The entire cloud form floor dissipated. We were falling into the empty air. There was no wind as we plummeted down, our father refusing to even look upon us. We drew closer and closer to the ground, but the stretches of green forests and rushing rivers were far beyond our reach. Where the earth of our mother should have caught us, my brothers and I continued to fall into a huge chasm in the earth, deeper and deeper, 
we were cast into the darkness. The rocky opening of the chasm affused the light that dwindled as we fell. I watched as it faded into the tenebrous around us, swallowed by the oppressive darkness. Brunty screamed as he thudded hard against the floor. Stirrups landed next to him. I braced myself for a moment before I too landed beside them. My entire body ached as I lay there, feeling the vibrations run through me. The ground beneath was hard, but it did not feel like earth. It was too rough and too jagged, almost like stone, but wrong somehow. Once we had all caught our breath, we looked up, searching through the thick murk, but there wasn't even a flicker of light left. Without any light, we were left stumbling around, unable to understand where we were. We three all called to our father, the great sky, Uranus, but there was only silence. We called to our mother, the earth. We thought of her warmth in this cold, dark place, and we begged she come to us, but she did not answer. And so, we were left entirely alone. In this realm where nothing was as we knew it. It was not Earth. We knew our mother well. And this place was unlike it. But how to describe a place that is by its very nature so indescribable? It felt familiar, yet wrong. Cold, but not just physically. My mind, my very spirit, felt not just the cold, but the very absence of all warmth. The darkness that surrounded us took years to adjust to. Years! Until our eyes could finally see each other. But even then, that was no relief. This place made you feel beyond trapped. It stripped us of thoughts of hope, of freedom, of joy. Any comfort we might think of was twisted in our minds and hearts. Even with our great strength and power, there was no escape. Breaking through the walls was impossible, so we would sit beside one another. And in this realm, we would still feel completely alone. Everything about it was uncanny and twisted, especially when compared with the memories of our mother. At first, we thought it was a mistake. But as days turned to weeks, we knew. We knew. And the small sliver of hope we had clung to was snuffed out like the light above us. The realm is twisted in so many ways, but the worst is, it can show you what lies outside. Everything you long for, and always out of your grasp. It would show us glimpses of our mother, our father, our brothers and sisters, just enough to long for it, but never enough to feel relief or even distraction. Flashes of how they grew in the light, how they rejoiced and lived together with one another. Each instant that was shown would hurt us to see. But through these moments we learnt of them, and why we were trapped in the first place, why they were free, and we were forgotten. Who was to blame? Our father, the great skies, the mighty Uranus, was disgusted with us. I recognised it all, as the newest of our siblings were surrounded. Winds whipping about them, their hundred-handed bodies. The clustered creatures were easily lifted and trapped in the same dark clouds we were. These images flickered behind my eyes, projected into my mind. I tried to shut my eyes, to block out the horror before me. But there was no escape. 
as our latest siblings were stripped from our mother, the earth, hauling them and throwing them into the pit. They fell through the earth itself, past the lands of the dead, deeper until there was nothing but darkness. Brontes and Stirrups turned towards the large thumping sounds, squinting into the darkness. Our brothers had hit the floor of Tartarus, and we were no longer the only prisoners in this realm. The Hecatonicaries Thrown into the dark, uncontrollable, vile things that we are, we three Hecatonicaries. Briarius caught us, Sky Cheese. Stand tall with our sprawling limbs and fifty heads. For it is not our fault we cannot control our power. It is their fault. For they abandoned us, imprisoned us, left us alone. It is their fault we are filled with rage. So much so it burns. The only fire in this place is in us. The only way to deal with the unending torment, the sheer nothingness that persists in this pit, is to destroy. To have one hundred eyes and still not see. There is nothing like it. The Cyclopes found us, calling that they were coming to our aid. For they knew this realm better than we. But the voices that called from the darkness were too much. They tried to soothe us, to make us calm and quiet, to make us like them. As if good behaviour and wallowing in our self-pity would help. They do not reward the best prisoner with a lesson sentence. My brothers and I were not as weak as our single-eyed kin, and we would not relent. We would not give up as they had and they could not understand us. The Cyclops may have only had one eye, but they only had four limbs too. They were more like the rest of our family, the Titans, than we ever would be. But who would want to be like them? We Hecatonicaries can match the Cyclops in size, but what they lacked we were given an abundance. We were given too much. To control godly power in only four limbs. Oh, how easy they all have it. But they would not keep us here. Our strength is even greater. We used it on this realm. Determined to tire it out. To find a breaking point. The walls would not last forever. It took us years to learn how to use our limbs, desperately flailing in our youth. But it did damage. But to control each limb, to strike one spot fifty times without stopping, caused destruction we could only dream of. And with all our power, we pounded at everything we could in this realm. We tore at the edge we found. We crushed anything we could. The strange materials crumbled in our hands regularly. And yet, in all the broken pieces, in their thousands, it never seemed to be enough. Every broken shard would merge back into the unending darkness that was Tartarus. The Cyclopes tried to sway us. To convince us to lay down our hands and stop. But we would not join them in their weakness. And so they learned to stay out of our way. For if they got into our path, we would tear them apart far more easily than we tore at this realm. They avoided us for years after that. Until we all saw a light. High above us, from the entrance in which we were all discarded, a light shone down. The first light we had seen in years. It was blinding at first. And then we heard a voice. Soft, soothing, warm. Everything this realm was not. Gaia, the Earth, our mother. With her words she calmed the anger and fires. 
and she whispered promises. Oh. That we would have to endure this existence no longer. That very soon, our siblings would come. They would help us, save us, free us. We just had to wait. And then the light was gone. And we were encompassed by the darkness once more. The Cyclops found us. And we all agreed to wait together. We travelled to the place we fell, as close as we could remember. Without the light it was hard to tell. But we sat, and we waited. Renewed with hope and vigour, we waited. Thinking of the skies, the earth, our family. We waited. We all tried not to let the realm's torments take away our hope. Our mother would not lie to us, would she? All she had said was, soon. And so, we waited. We waited. And our hope transformed slowly into fear. Anxieties and worries filling our heads. Voices of doubt whispering words of another betrayal. Until we felt it. The energies of the universe. The balance had changed. We felt the power drain from our father. The great skies unseated at the head of the universe. We rejoiced to feel the power our youngest brother took from him. Our father had locked us here. And our mother would finally see us free. The light at the top of Tartarus returned, and we shouted with joy. Our new king, our beloved brother, had come to liberate us, just as he had saved the universe. We shouted our joy, bursting into cheers. And then the light went out. And we were shrouded in darkness. We heard a distant echo from above us, the great strangled roar from some beast. Our new watchdog. Our new jailer set by our youngest brother, the new king. A dragon. It marks the exit to this realm. We finally knew. But no matter how we tried, we could not pass its fire. And then, nothing. And so we waited in the darkness, until it was clear no one was coming to save us. We had been abandoned again. Living Mythology is our attempt to bring the stories of our ancestors back to life. They explained their universe through the medium of their religions. Their gods were not distant beings of academic study. They were living, breathing entities that reflected the wants, needs, good and evil in the very heart of humanity. We only wish to encourage others to study the deep and rich cultures of our forebears. We hope you have enjoyed our labors. If so, then do consider liking and subscribing. If you wish to support improvement in our endeavor, then we do have a patron as well. Until next time, be good to all, but most especially yourself.